How's everyone doing? Yeah, that was that was really enthusiastic. I heard one and a half people say that. I didn't even know that was possible. Who's the half person out of that one and a half people I heard having a good day? Was it that one over there? You having half a good day or are you half a person having a full good day? How many people do really, really long drives? Where'd you drive from? Geraldton? I've heard of that place. Apparently I live there. Next question. Do you have a full license and half a car or half a car and a full license? Neither. You drove here from Jordan and you don't even have half a license? That's very illegal. I respect that. Yes? Did you drive? Through the Nullarbor? How was it? What? Sounds about right. After that really, really long 14 hour drive, do you want to listen to a 30 minute show about a bunch of really long driving? Yes. You guys are weird. I was driving here, it took 20 minutes, and even I was just like, Ugh, do I have to talk about more driving? Does this look familiar to anyone? This very reflective TV screen is showing a radioactive capsule that was dropped from a Rio Tinto delivery truck a few kilometers from Newman and uh, caused a massive radiation scare because this is cesium and um, it's not good for you. It's one of those alkaline metals, but I do wonder what Rio Tinto was thinking when they dropped that radiation capsule in Newman, like whether they were going, ah, or whether they were like, actually kind of a little giddy, because I think they were a little giddy. I think they were like going, <laughs> we dropped that. Because you know why I think they were happy about dropping this radioactive capsule in the middle of the desert? Simple. This was 40 clicks from BHP's biggest mining town. Has anyone ever heard of Newman, the town? I love remote towns. They are really obscure, just like all of us. Dropping a radioactive capsule next to Newman is the mining industry equivalent of that time the Soviet Union put nukes in Cuba. I reckon it was Cold War era mining espionage. Who is Rio's Cuba? I didn't have anything planned for this image. It's just, it's just a picture of um, a Cuban leader plastered on an opal. This is just a normal man. It's a picture of a normal guy. He's just like very average. He's like you, but like older and like normal. In fact, so normal, this guy. So completely and utterly average that his name, even his name, is just an amorphous blend of Barry and David. So he's the very average name of Barbara. This Barbard guy, he likes, he likes delivering things. He does feel a bit empty, he feels a bit unfulfilled in life. You know, all that driving, it doesn't add anything to him. Driving doesn't really make sense. Like when you think about it, you're always driving to somewhere and then you're driving from somewhere. That's like adding one and then minus one. It, it just, it, it doesn't make any sense. It doesn't mean anything. But what does make sense is Australia's landscape, full of the most beautiful and fruitful sights. You ever just look upon the road and admire the wildflowers, the, the colourful red dirt, the scrub, the greenery, the rivers, especially places like Bronifer, it's, it's absolutely beautiful. And you start to realise that Australia, although it is mostly desert, it is just, it is just brimming with the most beautiful and exotic life. And you know how I know that for sure? It's because of all the roadkill you see on the road. That's how you know that Australia is full of life. There's no way you can have that much roadkill and not be full of animals because they just keep coming. Why are we considered a desert, first of all, when we have so much of that? I remember in school, our relief teacher taught us how to pass the time on long road trips by counting roadkill. That's, that's how I learned to count to 100. She was just like, that is our one dead rabbit, ah, ah, ah. A two dead rabbit, ah, ah, ah. And a three dead, oh no, that's just a very hungry fox. Does anyone here also not know how to count? We've got four, seven, negative three? Negative three people in the audience can't count. Okay, higher than I thought. You guys might not know this because I made him up on the spot, but Barvid is actually a refugee. Though he, he didn't flee from like a war-torn place like this. <laughs> Yeah. 
No. He flees from consequences. Mainly the consequence he flees from is eating his friends, Barry and David. The Australian Defence Satellite Communication Station. It's a top secret spy base whose primary purpose to be a building. I mean, that's the primary purpose of almost anything in the world. But secondary purpose of this spy base is, get this, espionage. As said by my favourite spy, this espionage expert. Primary purpose of this satellite communication station is to spy on rival nations like the Principality of Hutt River. The ATO have taken money out of my bank. The Principality of Hutt River will live forevermore. The attacks that the imperialist Australians are proposing against this great nation will be defended by the people of Hutt River. There is no way that they'll take my tax money. I am a free man and I'll live by free rules. This wheat is mine and I'll sell as much as I demand. May God save the king and may God save Hutt River province. Until further notice, all borders within the Principality of Hunt River will be closed. No one may enter and no one may leave until our independence is assured. I am Prince Philip. Hunt River's sworn sovereign prince. I will protect our glorious sovereign nation to its last breath. Hurrah! We love a little bit of espionage. Not only is this spy base meant to destabilize the tyrannical superstate of the Hutt River province, it's also full of aliens. Believe me, I got that like crazy curly hair, that means that I'm telling the truth. Barvid the most normalest guy in the world, his world anyway, because Barvid is actually a blob. They're aliens designed entirely to, I don't know, take your job or something. I, I really didn't read up on them. That's why they're aliens, because the, the, their existence is alien to me. I just don't know about it. Frankly, just uh, don't you worry about that, all right? Said by this, this famous man, who was also a blob. Barvid is still the normalest guy in the world. He eats food, see, he's eating food. You eat food too, don't you? You guys, you guys thought you were so special because you ate food, but no, he does it too. He also like pays rent. Even aliens pay rent. Trying to do both at the same time's a bit, a bit hard. You guys ever like pat your head and like scratch your belly at the same time? You're not normal. How did you do that? Do it again. This one needs to be on stage. That is, that is an act. That is, that is an insane thing. Do it again. You guys seeing this? This. This kid can like, obviously you're a person of like kinesthetic talents. Barbara used to have no problem paying his rent. Cause he used to, you know, share his rent with his mates, Barry and David. But now that they're digested hunks of like bile because they were eaten, if it get eaten, it's not very pleasant. That's the story of how an alien decided to work for Rio Tinto. Trust me, what I said was 100% true. You want the evidence? Why? That's boring, you're boring. Look, I'm, I'm doing a fun jig. Is that not enough? Is that not got you convinced that there are aliens working for Rio Tinto? Is this not convincing enough? They're delivery drivers and they they drive three-wheeled South American pigeon cars. They also would they get paid in Scooby Snacks. See, there's a picture of there's a picture of a guy getting paid in Scooby Snacks. This is not photoshopped. Old mate Barber, the alien that I've been talking about this whole time, he has a lot of riz. And what's Riz, you might ask? It's an alien gland to devour alkaline metals. Rio Tinto execs or employers or whoever, I don't actually know how companies work. They received this contract written on very sticky paper. He said, hi, I'm a very human muscle driver. I think I would be best to work for this role because I can operate a car. And then the next page was just a poorly pasted picture of that radiation symbol they used to show dangerous materials. And then the word, yummers. I was very tired when I wrote that slide. <laughs> they found out his price beat everyone else's, stopped 
item by 10% and I had him. Next up on the agenda of that day was the fact that they increased their extraterrestrial diversity quotas for that uh, year, employment. After talking about how many explosives they misplaced and how best to siege uh, Port Hedland when the corporate wars commence, there will be some, you know, moderately nice applause after that announcement. This is the moment that Barber tries to have a dry. After snacking on Mr. Pibbles, now he gets in the car. I don't know if you guys ever experienced this, driving up and down for long trips. You always get really well prepared the day before. And when the day to actually go and do your long drive is, you get in the car, you've checked that you got everything, 15 minutes into your drive, you're like, wait, I forgot the bloody steering wheel. Not even 15 minutes in his trip, not even out of his town, which by the way, he lives in Mingingu, but that's an irrelevant fact. Crashes his car into the bush, creates a whole bunch of roadkill, which is absolutely devastating to Barbie. Look at his very sad face that I forgot to turn upside down so it actually looks sad. Not only is this devastating because it's literally uncountable amounts of roadkill because Barbie can't count. It also is very sad because now he can't eat it. He was gonna eat that stuff like rye bread. This is like bread going molly to him. It's just, it's just sad. Additionally, he's got a really serious medical condition, this guy. He suffers from empathy. It's very serious. Why are you laughing? You're not meant to laugh at this comedy show. I'm talking about this man suffering from empathy. He looks at people feeling bad and then he feels bad. How terrible must that be? Because you see, the Riz gland is meant to go at the length of Freebird, but instead hit by and struck by a smooth criminal and now forever rotates at the polarity of a bad romance. Forever giving poor old alien Barbed empathy. Barbed can't really dwell on that fact though. He gets a call from his Samsung phone, which he was going to eat later, but the executives of Rio Tinto, up at the top of their tippiest top of Rio Tinto Tower, the tallest tower in Perth, by their standards, all the bigwigs are losing their minds. They need their delivery, and Barbet just decided to crash in the middle of the bush. They won't let him take the North Northwest Coastal Highway for some reason. What a weirdo. But Barbet has no choice. He has to hitchhike. Have you guys ever hitchhiked before? You've never hitchhiked. You guys have hitchhiked. Okay, that is the laziest kind of hitchhike of it. It doesn't count if it's your mum. Did you at least do the like thumbs up thing hitchhikers do? Okay, I'll, I'll allow that. I'll allow that as the counting as a hitchhike. Once I figure out how the button works, maybe. You glued this down. There you go. Flawless. So the first guy that he hitchhiked with was a pretty good person. Because um, it's better than having a rat in your hand. Part two, the hitchhike. We're gonna remove ourselves from the horrors, the absolute horrors of the last 20 minutes and get to something a little more delightful and fun and light-hearted. Starting with this guy, the first person to pick him up from the hitchhike. Barbara goes and asks him, what do you do for a living, mate? Old mate goes, uh, if I tell you, I'll have to kill you. So he's really funny and he has a lot of funny jokes like that. He's such a laugh. Can you voice this alien for us? Those are very inflammatory words. Do you have any response? Mm, indeed, indeed. And do you have anything to say about that? And, and what was that you said in the back? It seemed very important. I forgot the entire reason I have this picture of Whitnoom in my PowerPoint. All I did with this picture is replace the words on the shed with Doctor in the house. It took me an hour. In spite of this guy living in a, a sheep shed humpy, I refuse to explain. I wish to remain crazy. Ra, uh, uh, uh. Roma, ro, ro, ra. I don't know French. What sort of romance? Hmm? He got a bit sleepy on the wheel. Unlike you guys who don't drive because you're all 
uh, and half people. What do they call those? Children. You're all children. Oh, you're not a child. What are you then, Alice? Tell me what you are. Gaia. You're a Gaia. So you're a, you're a body of water. Yes. Nice. Right. Tell me, uh, what is it like being a body of water? How much grape juice do you drink? How do you still have eyes? Have you guys ever solve a driving? Like when you're fatigued, they say that you're meant to like take a break, have a nap. Does anyone actually do that? Nope, nope, nope. Never sleep because you're tired. That is silly. You only sleep when you want to prove how still you can lie. If you are getting tired at the wheel of a car, it's not to take a break and have a nap. It's to just play I Spy. It's the ultimate long drive survival technique. Handed down from generation to generation to generation to, there were no cars in the previous generation, so it doesn't count, and they used horses instead. But the horses, they used to play I Spy, and that is how we learned to play I Spy. Fact, don't look it up, or do, and then discredit me later. But that just means you care, so I'm fine with that. One time when my brother was driving me way up north, we get a bit sleepy at the wheel, a little bit EP, a little bit. And it would like swerve off the road a bit. It would cause me to jerk up and be like, uh, uh, I spice something, something beginning with, um, something beginning with R. It's, it was the only way to get him to like pay attention to the road. What on the road could possibly start with R? What begins with R? Road train. Road train begins with R. You know what else starts with R? Anything else? Rabbit. Rabbit. Rabbit starts with R. So does the four rear ends on a road train. And this is what happens when you crash into those four rear ends of a road train. It becomes a train wreck.